what's missing curfew. It's when you kind of play guilty, but you show up. How nice is a green light on the road, though? No practice tomorrow, no playing, just go. Scotty Upshaw in the clear, and he scores! One in front, scores! A few laughs, a little bit of fun, and obviously a lot of hockey talk. You're listening to Missing Curfew. With our lads. Up dog! Shaking, brother. What's happening, fella? It's a nice golf shirt you got there. Yeah, it's, well, it's a good color. What color is that? This is uh, <laughs> this is hot pink. It's like a, no, it's not hot. Cranberry? Is this? Cranberry? Oh. This was uh, this was a gift. This was a gift. Uh, the painting was a gift. Talk. Shout out to my my girl Michelle Davies from uh, my Lulu girl. She's a great. Is that girl. Lulu? Yeah, this is a Lulu tart. Oh, she wow. sent it to me a couple. I mean, it's it's not fresh, but it's not I fresh? haven't shown it on the podcast yet, so I you know share it with a love. Hey, shout out to Dallas Aikens, who, uh, Dallas is a big fan of the pod. Uh, I love Dallas Aikens. I, I love him. He's one of my favorite coaches. And near the end of my career, he was great for me with just communication and, and talking. But anyways, he was, he would come in every morning, yeah, head to toe, Ooh. Johnny V. Johnny V. Head to toe. Wow. Always looking good. Like, just always looking sharp with Johnny V. And I would wear Johnny V. So when we were playing together, you know, I was like, fuck, nice tarp. I didn't see that one online or whatever. And then the other day, he sent me a picture he was at South Coast Plaza heading into Johnny V. And uh, and then he texted me this morning. He said, uh, Upshaw looks like he's a Johnny V guy, huh? Or he could pull off. What did he say here? Hold on. Now he knows this stuff. I thought he always used to ride his bike into practice. He's not riding in with some nice. I think Updog could be a good Johnny V candidate. Yeah. I go, Updog loves a good Johnny V tarp dally. Oh, yeah. But he would he'd have his change of clothes in his backpack or leave it at the rink. But, yeah, he would ride in from Poway where – Eventually, the new practice rink was going to be built, and I did not know that. When I was the only guy that lived downtown, I used to have to drive thirty minutes to Poway every morning, just like yeah, one eye open, fucking hung cheese, being like, "Oh my god!" Uh, he would ride in practice and then ride back, and then he would do every ride that we did. He would do like he would split us up into four groups, and he would do the ride with all four groups, and they were like a good forty-five minute ride, and he would do it with all four groups, and so it's like. How can you, you know? He looks like he gets like a like a thirty two regular right off the rack. Oh yeah, huh? Yeah. Probably doesn't even need to hem the pants. No, I don't think he probably does. Good, he it's always looks good. good. Yeah, I don't know if I could pull off the rack anymore. No, especially after this weekend, there's a lot of there's a lot of drinking and eating and yeah, some good food. You getting fat? I don't think you get fat. No, I don't know. I think you're going the you're going the other way. No, I'll tell you who's not fat. Sheldon Whiskey's not fat. No. No, that picture not. you sent to me, I'm like, holy fuck, is this guy jacked? Just ripped. Just right? lean. Looks like a, well, you like a UFC seen the fight fighter. we were eating. We're eating Wagyu for whatever they call it. Five. Yeah, they call it the grade. I, I don't know. Grade five Wagyu. Japanese Wagyu. This stuff was. A5. You know, A5. Thank you. A5 Wagyu. <laughs> I mean, you put it on. Kyle, was, you know your beef, set. I was putting it on the, the grill for, I want to say like 25 seconds aside, taking it off. It was basically rare. Tasty. Was it still moving? <laughs> it was. It, was it still? It was. Good? I mean, it was just insane, and that the, the whole setup there with the barbecue outside, and he has the, the whole thing. Oh, the guy's a beast. Shell man is the man. I mean, he just looked like he could be like. I mean, he looks like fucking, um, Poirier with the shirt off. The guy who just fought last week, at Dustin Diamond Poirier. Like he looked. I'm like that guy could just go to Dustin Poirier for Halloween. Just put a pair of UFC gloves on he's him. All, he's, got he's got a new fresh tat that he that he got in one sitting. That's just insane. Anyone who's got tattoos and with that detail and stuff like in and around his elbow, like that lion head. I'm like, buddy. Brutal. Like how many, you know, how many perks? How, or how, many, many, weeds? how, many, how many weed pens do you got to smoke to get in there? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you're not supposed to because it fucks up your blood, right? Your, I don't know. Your blood or whatever. Anybody yeah. that says a tattoo doesn't hurt doesn't have a tattoo. Because it hurts, it sucks, it's yeah. brutal. Yeah, it's painful. I got no tattoos. You got a tattoo? Yeah, you got a tattoo. I got a tattoo. I think I've told the story before. I was going through. I, I got this little fighting Irish guy when I went to OHL camp. Right? I got my mom wouldn't let me get any bigger than that. So as I got bigger, where's that one? On it's under. Ass. It's under my shamrock. So as I was getting bigger, my tattoo is getting smaller. And I was like in Vancouver, going through a tough stretch. And Alex Bolduc, Duker was a guy that was up and down. And he had cool tattoos. So I'm like, what are you doing today, Duker? He's like, ah, I'm going to go get this tattoo fixed up. I'm like, fuck it. I'm coming with you. I'm like, uh, hey, fella, can you put a shamrock over top of my... Yeah, and instantly I'm like, all right, let's do it. Put my name on there, too, for some stupid fucking reason. <laughs> and I'll never forget the next day I come in the rink and Matthew Schneider, I take my shirt off and Schneider looks at me. He's like, no, Obi. Oh, God. Tell me, you fucking... No. <laughs> no. And I'm like, Schneider, it's not that bad, is it? He's like, no, it's not that bad. But look at this fucking tattoo I got here. This tattoo I got. Look, how, look at how they look now. 
I wish I wouldn't have got this tattoo. When you're 30 years old, trust me, you're fucking wake up and wish you didn't have that tattoo. I was like, oh, fucking shit, I'd sell down. Up dog, I was in a day over 30 where I would look in the mirror and be like, why do I have this stupid fucking yeah. thing? And I remember bumping into Schneids on a flight. And I'm, you were on that flight with me too, I think. And I'm like, Schneids, I want to tell you one thing, buddy. You couldn't have been more right about my tattoo. When I was 30 years old, I looked at it. Like every day I look at it, I'm like, God, I wish it wasn't there. And then I remember one time at Loops' party, I had my tarp off. And uh, this chick, actually, uh, she's a good Canadian gal. Rosemary was her name. Um, she just yelled, hey, O'Brien. And I was like, because <laughs> she read my tattoo. And I was like, ah, oh, shit. This is, I'm that guy. Yeah. I'm that guy that you could just yell my name at me. But yeah, you ended up working out. Right. Ended up working all right. I took her to the I took her to the SP Awards with Loops on yeah, the cover. Exactly. ESPN. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're not getting away with like you know, JW doing, Marriott when, when your tarps off doing something that you maybe shouldn't have. Like, your name's just giving it all away. Ah, uh, listen, Whether that's no. It's it, it, yeah. Like if I ever you know decided to rob a bank with my shirt, your name's off, John. I'd oh be, yeah, John O'Brien. I'd be like, guilty. What? I'd yeah. be guilty. Yeah. No, it's. Fellas out there, don't get tattoos. It's I mean, for, it's it's for a certain certain someone. It's I mean, a, if they're cool tattoos, your life, good. yeah, I, I I agree. I mean, I, I oftentimes I wanted to get like a hockey angel. Like I'm like, yeah, right yeah. on my quad. Like, yeah. And then you know, my buddy Jared Luke and my best friend growing up was like, and he was a sick hockey player too. But he's boom, he put one right on there, and I'm like, I'm glad you did that first because I actually I. I don't know if that's exactly what I want. You know what's cool spot? You know what I should have done? It Cons actually has it. Cons has it right here. I should have got a little oh, leprechaun heart. right on my left chest, a little one. Yeah. Or like if you win a Stanley Cup, if, if I would have watched, I would have probably put a little Stanley Cup there, but like yeah. to put on the back of your shoulder is a yeah. tough spot. So the boys, when we won like the Royal Bank Cup in Fort Mac, guys went off and got the Royal Bank Cup on their, and I'm like, fellas. I, I mean, I think win, Big Scott but... grabbed me and was like, there is no fucking chance yeah. on planet Earth. You're gonna go with those with those no, boys and do this. You were you 15? I was 16. Yeah, no chance. Yeah, thanks, Big Scott. Like, yeah, yeah. Good luck. Talk me off the ledge. Um, you know what though? Tattoos on girls can be awesome. I remember this one girl had a tattoo of like just two lips, like right on her right butt cheek, and I was just like, "Wow, that is that." <laughs> can fuck. I can I put my lips right <laughs> that on? That is there. hot. And then another girl that I met along the way had the Rolling Stones, you know, oh, no. tongue out, like, yeah, right on her like. Kind of hip bone. Yeah. 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 Right like on. right beside her bikini line that was right there. And I just always remember being like, wow, that is kind of sexy. Yeah. Again, like there's there's some girls' tattoos look great on. Yeah. There's other girls you like, you, what were you, you know, thinking? such nice skin. Why would you do that? And then I, I love a good belly button ring. I don't know about you, but I love belly a good, ring. I had a girl, I love a good belly button ring. I don't know. I would say probably more nose ring. Nose ring. Than the belly button. Ring. See, I'll go, I, I, I like belly button ring. And then if you get a tongue ring, it's next level. I don't know if I could date a girl with a tongue ring, but man, when I would just meet a girl with a tongue ring, I was like, how you doing? Nipple rings, maybe? Listen, why we're I've, in a good I've, nipple I've had, I've had, uh, why know, we're in a good, I won't say the girl's name, but one girl, yeah, double nipple rings was nice touch too. Yeah. yeah we're getting a little off topic here. So, <laughs> sorry, Morgan. Sorry, Morgan. We're getting a little off topic here. How do we even get, how, how do we even get to this point? But it's played Stanley Cup finals hey, listen, here. Listen, listen, fellas, don't get tattoos. And if your girl's out there, get those belly button rings <laughs> humming up, dog. Um, I up dog. I just want to say real quick, uh, shout out to Jason Beach, Evan Knapp, and Tom Doherty. Um, you know, Evan Knapp did a really great thing for Jason Beach. That's what's great about Big Canyon Country Club. It's a family feel. Beach was going through some stuff. Evan was there to help him out in a tough situation. Uh, thanked him by getting us on Cypress Point. Um, and then we played Pebble the day before. It took us three hours to play nine holes of Pebble, which is a little slow. Uh, but the back die was unbelievable. Um, and then Cypress Point up, uh, you'll get there. It's it's just a cool experience. I mean, it's it's very cool. So I just want to say thank you to those boys and Up Dog. That's what Big Can is all about. It's a special place because yeah, as a family feel. So it was cool. Yeah, no, it was a well thought out. I I will remind our um, our friends at Big Canyon, the ones that know that Team Canada lost best of seven against Team USA. Craig Manchester, we story. Yeah, against you and I during COVID, we had a best of seven match. We lost on the last day. And we had him down in game six, like right at the very end. Fuck. We had him down in game six, and we, we elected to go play an extra playoff hole. Did we not? To Lilo? No, but listen, yeah, we did that. And then I, I, we, we, we literally, I think all we had to do was be birdie 16 or 17, or par 16 or 17. Yeah, it was not perfect. We, 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 we folded, and now we owe our boys a trip to Pebble, so I'm hoping maybe. No, so I'll, listen, I, yeah, I, I talked to Chas about that. Yeah, September. But he thinks we're playing for his paying for his plane. I'm like, fella, I, I don't know how to tell you either, either way. Like, 
We, we no, can't afford to pay. on a Southwest bird. That's why I said, I go, if yeah. you want us to pay, you'll yeah. be flying into Oakland and driving to the course. Yeah, what does he care? We're not going to pay for his plane. I'm like, dude, we made that bet. We were playing in the NHL. Like, now we're doing a podcast. Like, we're, we're not, yeah. you know, we're fucking. Yeah, take it easy, we're, Chaz, we, Yeah, we're, we, we put gas in our car, through, but that's all we can, <laughs> that's all we can afford. But, but, but September, we do all that, but Pebble is a special place up, dog. And uh, Yeah, absolutely. So, tap room's fun. So, with a three-hour front night, I take it there's just. Well, a lot of beers. Fuck, they don't give them away. We were drinking double John Daly's and double vodka sodas, and Doherty was drinking quadruple tequilas with the fucking splash of grapefruit in there. And every time we we did, we got four rounds, two hundred fifty bucks a pop. Each but round was each two, round was two hundred fifty bucks a pop. So wow. we spent a thousand bucks out there on booze. Yeah, what, is there a cart girl? Uh there's a there is like a little cart. No, there's a little cart after three. Yeah, there is then a, a little halfway house where you grab a little half dog and a drink. Then you come back around to the halfway house again on, what's that, par three, 14? Yeah. And then there's a drink right before 17. You, you messed up. You should have just brought a bottle of Crown Royal right in your bag. I said that. Yeah. I actually did say, I don't know if that's frowned upon at Pebble Beach Golf Resort. I just but think you're like, you know, a lot just, of people must do that. This is what, you know, this is what I do. This is what I, I just bring a bottle of Crown every yeah. time I golf and, and <laughs> we're going to be this is what I do. I, I, just, I drink. You guys just thing. accept this, right? I, I'm allowed to bring a water bottle, right? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I'll bring this too. I mean, that Pebble Beach, though, man, it, it is just. I mean, when you get to five, look out, man. Yeah. Five, six, becomes, seven, eight, then nine, it becomes ten. The mecca, the mecca of of the holy grail. Of yeah. Golf. We yeah. played the tips too, not the U.S. Open tees, but we played around probably right around seven thousand yards. I shot eighty three. I played good. Um, first time I've ever done that. We we kind of did it by mistake. Us. We thought the blues were just a normal tees. And by the time we, when we got to number four, we realized, oh, we're playing the tips here. But it, it was a great experience. Um, How did Beachy play? Because he's a stick. Beachy shot one under at Cypress. Wow. Fucking Doherty, man. Doherty was one under, one under at Cypress till uh, I think he doubled 14 or something. Yeah, I teed off at 730. out. I wasn't perfect. I think yeah. I shot 84. Scrappy. Still, scrappy. Still nice, though. Still nice. That's yeah, great. That's cool. Awesome. Uh, up dog, speaking about golf, we got the U.S. Open preview presented by Adidas Golf. Made for wherever you play, fella. Last week, Scotty Scheffler. I, I pulled the fucking up dog here, boys. I, 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 I didn't get her in. I didn't get him in. He was plus 375 to win the Memorial. By the way, what a what a course that Jack's designed there. You, you, you talked about it. Say what you said about the PGA, about Mirfield. About uh, Mirfield. Yeah, I think that Mirfield is a potential landing spot. It has to be for either a U.S. Open where you can grow the rough up, bring in the fairways a little bit, and really trick it out and make it hard, or the just the PGA Championship because Valhalla proved to be a pitch and putt to these guys. Yeah. And quite frankly, it's not what our major championships need to be in golf. So I think if you want to find a great course – I think Jack built the best fucking place to go challenge yourself. Yeah. Memorial in Columbus. Great track. Uh, it beat the boys up. I mean, Scotty Scheffler, minus eight, wins the tournament. That's Anytime they win in single digits, I, yeah. I, I love that. Yeah, because then you're dropping shots down the last, you know, you yeah. want to see where guys start to have to squeeze it, and they might make a bogey double. You want to see their butt cheeks clench up a yeah, little bit. That's, eh? that's what golf is. <laughs> Golf's not just about fucking flying in and tapping in birdies all the time. Like I said, minus 25. Like I said, the cream. Yeah, you want to like see them deal with a bit. You want to see them deal with a little adversity. But hey, listen, we, we may have an opportunity with DraftKings to get to Columbus in uh, October. We'll see if it plays out for us. If we do, I want to play Mirfield Village with you. Um, one reason is these milkshakes. You hear about these milkshakes they have? Oh, oh they have, the, I guess, the best milkshake, brings the up best the milkshake on tour. I saw Tony Finau warming up before the round, and he's having a milkshake before the round. Wow. I don't know if that's ideal for performance, to have a big old milkshake before the round, but they're legendary. These milkshakes are legendary. I'm Riviera, going. I had a milkshake at Riviera. Actually. Before your round? No, it was during. The guys, they brought it out with a with a chicken cup. It was amazing. A milkshake and a chicken cup? Yeah. Wow. I know, but it was like something so random, right? I'm like, like a chocolate fucking milkshake. I guess these milkshakes at Meal for Village. Wow. Guys, all the guys. Hey. All the, and you can, athletes nowadays are super health freaks. But when it comes to a milkshake, it's good for yourself. Hopefully you're not lactose intolerant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I should have had that. I was in the lead, and then I had to shit my pants. Uh, U.S. Open up dog. Uh, Pinehurst number two. Listen, I'm, I'm a golf nerd when it comes to major championships. Uh, a little slow out of the gates this morning. Um, but I had the I had the live at the U.S. Open on uh, this morning and a little bit last night before I fell asleep after the hockey game. Course looks tough. tough. You're going to see a lot of Texas wedges. 
I mean, I've seen guys trying to chip. I've seen guys putting 30 yards off the green because the lies are so tight and everything is like, yeah, the greens are like this. They're like tabletops and they roll off and then they roll into like sandy, long, shitty shit that you just don't want to be in. So I think we're going to see a lot of Texas wedges. Yeah. I think it was maybe Murakawa or who was it? Yeah, it was maybe Shifley this morning. I saw him hitting like three woods around the, the green. Yeah. Like little, like the loophole, fell, the heaven The heaven Oh, God. Yeah, that's oh, God, painful to watch. Jesus. But, but that, is that the shot you think you're going to see? Like the. I've seen a lot of guys practicing those like yeah. bump and runs. Blaine Stewart would be great. At, he, man, he could hit a seven iron from anywhere. Yeah. Like 20 feet off the green, 30 yards back. He just like. And I'm like, how do you do that? By the way, like, what's the what's the thought process in your head? He's like, you want to you want to land the ball one third the way to the hole, no matter where that is. You look at the hole, and then if you're pitching it with the seven iron, you want to land it one third the way, and then let it just roll out. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah that mitts. You're gonna have a touch. Listen, Pinehurst. I don't know if you remember, but back in 1999, Payne Stewart won his U.S. Open there, where he made that putt. Yeah, in the rain, did, rainbow was did, there. Did the, it was like pretty special. Yeah, I did the sick little pump and. Um, listen, uh, from what I've heard about the boys, everyone's fired up for this course. They've made some changes. It looks good. It's playing firm and fast. I heard Tiger talking about it this morning. Hey, by the way, you got obviously a beautiful boy now, Beckham. How cool is it for Tiger to be out there with his son, hanging out, hit, playing practice rounds? His son's on the range helping him with his swing. Like To me, that is like the coolest thing yeah. in the world. Right? Imagine yeah. being Tiger Woods' kid. You're like, all right, Dad, well, I'll come to the U.S. Open with you. We'll get your swing figured out. That's well, sick. Uh, I think it's amazing. Yeah. I think that I've always said it on the pod is that having the kids around the rink, having the kids like in the dressing room with the guys, you know, t- passing a guy tape, sticks, hanging out after a game when the guys are winning or when they lose, like whatever the case may be, they experience this, uh, the modality of, of being a, an athlete. I think it's it's very special for the dad and yeah. for the little guy. I just remember my rookie year, so these kids just buzzing all over the goddamn yeah. dressing room, dirt, grabbing weights and doing yeah. whatever they wanted. They had the trainers skate hands like, what the fuck's going on here? And we're like, ah, oh, it's tables, kids. Don't worry about it. Huh? Holy man. Wait, it's it's special. Like, the kids should deserve to, to do that. Yeah. Dad works hard at what he does to 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 live that life. Why not the kids? Yeah, no, it, it was super cool. And we'll see if, you know, one thing Tiger did say up, dog, and I can, I can get behind this because, you know, like I said, I, I got lucky enough to play Pebble this weekend. It was cold up there. Body's tight. Right, Tiger said the humidity in North Carolina is good for him. He's going to be sweating. He's used to it in Florida. It's going to make his back looser. He's going to get some run out around here. Like, it's a pretty easy walk. I don't. Know, I like to see Tiger make the cut, bro. I'm not going to Dude, bet it, but I'd like to see him make the cut. Um, let's see what that that would be. Make miss the cut. Let's see. I, I, I hope Woods. he finds a way, man. Tiger Woods to make the cut is. Where is this? They should just have Tiger is plus 220 to make the cut. I mean, the thing that scares me about Tiger is those little shots around the green. Like, he hasn't been playing, right? Like, I'm sure he's been practicing, but he hasn't been playing. Like, is he going to have his touch around the greens? You know what I mean? Like, is he going to be able to get up and down, find a way, or... I don't know. I'm not going to bet him. I, I hope he makes it. I'm not going to bet him, but uh, up dog... Who do you like? I think we both like, listen, we can both agree that Scotty Scheffler at plus 300. Yeah. I'm going to bet him. Is there anyone else out there that jumps out to you as a guy that uh, could get it done this week? Obi, I'm going to take Bryson DeChambeau, uh, who became a PGA fan favorite at the PGA Championship. Um, he played well there. I think he finished either second or third. Second. He, he is a plus 2,000 to win on DraftKings, plus 210 for a top 10. But anyone, you know, anyone like him who just plays the game like he does – he nerds out about it like he does. He's gonna, he's gonna have he's gonna have the shots ready, right? He's gonna he's gonna bomb it, and then he's gonna be a guy like figuring out how to get the ball just you know in in the right areas to play this course. So he's he's my guy. How about you? Yeah, no, good pick. And by the way, he was great at the PGA Championship. Yeah. I always listen. I, I like the live tour. We know that. I, I actually you know on um, Saturday before I left, I was watching the live and the Memorial Ron. I was watching the live over the memorial. I don't. I just know more guys on the live. I love David Faraday, but what Bryson DeChambeau did at the PGA Championship, I don't know. Made me like him a little bit. Yeah, more, right. He's cool. fist pumping and fucking, you know, being entertaining. I'm like, all right, this guy. I always thought it was a nerd biscuit, but he's kind of starting to grow on me a little bit. Yeah, I like when he threw the ball to the kid and that yeah. other guy grabbed it and he went like after the yeah. guy and said, "Hey, yeah." And he's won a U.S. Open. He won at. Um, uh, Oakmont, no, not Oakmont, Wingfoot. He yeah, won at Wingfoot. two major championships, right? He won. No, he's got one. One U.S. Open. He won at Wingfoot where the grass is fucking gnarly. 
But he's got the length, he's got the shots, and for him, if he's hitting these, for him, if he bombs it and you're hitting these higher higher irons in, as you know, yeah, on these tabletop greens at Pinehurst, you got a better chance of sticking him in there. So I like that pick by you. For me, I'm going to go with Colin Morikawa plus 1,400. He had a runner-up uh, last week at the Memorial. He was sniffing at the PGA Championship. The thing about Morikawa up is he can only hit it left to right. He can't turn the ball the other way, and I don't know Pinehurst enough to know if that's going to hurt him or not. Yeah. But he just feels to me like he's got a little bit of the, what Xander had going into the PGA. Had a runner-up last week. He's been sniffing. He's got a PGA championship and an open championship under his belt. I think at plus 1,400, um, that's going to be a solid bet, fella. Yeah, man. That would be three. It would be three different majors he'd win. Yeah, he's going be huge. For yeah, yeah. That's just such a nice accolade for these guys. Yeah. Like you win one, and then it's this totally different format tournament. The ego win another. Like the British is so different than, yeah. than the U.S. Open. And they're all so special. So, yeah, that's I like that pick. That's Very why good. it's such a feather in the cap for these guys that do win the career Grand Slam, right? Because every tournament, every major, is you got to have some kind of different shots and play it a different way and different elements. And, like, you know, Rory's got three out of four, no Masters. Spieth's got three out of four, no PGA. Um, it's just crazy. I mean, Kepka's listen. Got what? Kepka's only got two, but he's got Kepka's five. Kepka's got five majors, but there are three PGAs, two U.S. Opens. Crazy. I want Scotty Scheffler to win just so we can start talking Grand Slam. Great point. Like if he gets this done, now it's like, oh no, if he gets no, this no, one, he right. lost the PGA Championship. What am I talking about? Huh? He lost the PGA Championship. Yeah, but Scheffler's got what? One. No, but I'm just saying. I thought I, I forgot about the PGA. He's only got a Masters, and uh, he's got two Masters. Yeah. So he he, he needs but, to. But he's else. already. We're we're not just talking about Grand Slam with this guy. We're talking about so career best ever. Yeah. We're talking about a guy that can go for for best ever. I think. Yeah. Not by just. Yeah, major wins, but by just savagery golf. It's crazy, man. This is what I wanted to say up, Doug, and you brought it up. He's plus 300 to win, and you said that's crazy for a golfer to go three to one. That this is He's getting into Tiger stuff. This is yeah. Tiger's lines back in the day. At one point, I guess he was like two to one. When he was like at his element, you could get Tiger at plus 200 for a tournament. So Scheffler is now, I'm calling Doherty, by the way, Tom Scheffler now. He's playing such good golf. That's is what he, I call Is he, his he, handicap going down? Two now, still, yeah. Oh, yeah. Two. He's hitting it so good. He's got those mirror irons that you got. He's just striped. Really? Tom for him. Tom Scheffler. Tom Scheffler. Tom Scheffler. He drinks a little more than Scheffler, but <laughs> listen, dude, my, my plus 300, like you said, for a golfer's outrageous. It's outrageous. There's outrageous. 120 players in the field. There are probably more at the US Open, right? It's crazy, man. Crazy. Uh, Stu Hagelstad's playing in this this week. Is he? Is he in there? He qualified for the US Open. an amateur fucking genius. Um, anyways, I'm, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be in the beautiful state of Kansas with my girl Mac Miller, but I will be enjoying this up dog. Check it out, boys. We'll be right back here at Mission Curfew, fellas. Welcome back, up his world party, party time. time. Give it back to the kids. I was great. Hey, hockey was school, right? Eh? Yeah, I was in Aspen. Like last week was a you know I was in Malibu for a couple of days with our with our friends at uh, you know with the big guy Mac L Brock. We had a we had a great week. With a couple you know couple nights dinners and stuff we saw mark labelle from dirty honey he came and played some tunes for us it was all time um and then yeah went up to aspen for a three-day colorado extreme hockey camp uh put on by our boy sheldon um richie matt Fachuk was there this guy's a legend uh he wants to There's come some- on the pod yeah. he's a hilarious motherfucker man up to and, and a great guy with the kids he's been coaching and helping coach uh the okanagan hockey uh, the hockey program in denver um, we had our boy Brian Berard there. We had Loops, of course. Me and Loops were out taking care of the forwards. We had Berard and Matt Pachuk doing the D. Uh, so we were getting better with the kids. But one thing about these kids, Obi, uh, that Sheldon's put together, these kids are great kids. Yeah, maybe they're not the best like hockey players right now because I'm sure at you know in these programs around the country, these you know 10, 11 year olds are already doing Michigans and they're already you know putting the puck in between their legs. Like, they're pretty highly skilled kids nowadays. These kids are all. Their drive is there. They listen. They pay attention. They they love the fact that we're all out there, like helping them out. Uh, but they're just good kids. They're not. No one's talking back. No one's in the corner, like you know, spearing each other. You know what? Like yeah. When I grew up, guys were just off doing fucking random around. shit, fucking around. Yeah. These kids were great kids, and um, you know, it was it was pretty special. So so we did that, and then uh, you know, we had a couple nights out where you know, just hitting Aspen. It's nice. It's, yeah. It's Summertime's just upon us. How's there. the Amex bill after that? 
I didn't really, you know. You didn't pull it out, right? Eh? <laughs> huh? No, I, well, I definitely did. I had a couple of classes. It was the one night. I think, damn, those were t- pretty tasty. And I did have a dinner at Steak 316 or 316. That's their steakhouse there. It's, it's yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty awesome. Um, and then, you know, I was just checking on the house. We're going to probably spend a few weeks in July there, so. It's crazy how much call, uh, Sheldon gives back to that whole Colorado Extreme Hockey program, man. It's it's crazy how much of his own money he puts in, how and not just the money, how much he cares. It's crazy, dude. Like he he cares so much, and those kids are lucky to have somebody like Sheldon. I think that's probably why they're such great kids because of him, because of the parents that Sheldon surrounds himself with and allows these people to do it. It's it's pretty special. Yeah, and I think you know he said it best last year at his event when he got up and spoke at the at the charity night, and he said. You know, where I'm from, without hockey, like, I would have been either pumping gas or I'd have been, you know, getting in trouble, work, exactly. you know, working on the rigs, which isn't a bad thing. We're not saying that that's a bad life or whatever. But yeah. but what hockey did provide for him was a was a, a chance to have brotherhood, a chance to leave and go to school, a chance to be part of a team and understand, like, what, you know, what a team is, right? Yeah. And then basically him saying now, like, just how expensive hockey is, it's insane. And, and don't I know it? We, I maybe not have been able to play hockey. Should it have been this expensive back when we were kids? Yeah. And so he's trying to find a way to provide, you know, some some, not say underprivileged, but some families that don't really have the the means. He wants their kids to to have what he had and have what we had, and that's yeah. a chance to fucking play a great game, a beautiful game, uh, one that you know has taken us around the world. We wouldn't be sitting here talking about hockey every week together, nor with you know, thousand games together under our belt. Um, totally. If we didn't have our parents step up and, and work hard, blue collar, like lifestyles and provide us to, to fucking bl- blast it out on the ice. Yeah, no, it's great. And, and staying out of trouble, that's one thing, right? When, yeah. you play, when you play sports as a kid, it, it gives you structure. It gives you brotherhood. Like you said, uh, I did see some footage online. I did see some footage online of, uh, of Lupel doing a drill. He's lost a step or two. Yeah, he's lost. You know, he's, he, he loops. I love you, buddy. We've all, but uh, he's lost a step or two. He looked a little, uh, he looked a little stiff coming in there. Oh, I wasn't, tell you what, it wasn't is... exactly that looper, loophole, um, um shootout shot that Princey put up when it was just speak, speak, yeah. speak, yeah. speak. Yeah. It wasn't quite the same crispiness, but I it's good you to what, see loops out there. Y- you give credit. It's been so long since we've skated, but you give credit to the coaches who go out every day and oh, stand on the ice over totally that too. long. Because my back was boring. Oh, I bet. And and I mean, I love it though. Like I love being out there and I love, like I, I probably would love more like the 13 to 15 year old kids. Like the ones that, you know, they make passes. They make yeah. like, you know, they're coming in and they're trying new things. They know how to like one time they're starting to hit each other. Like where the game really starts to evolve. Like I think that's the, but I love like being out there and helping a kid like you know, hey, this is how you take that puck on the backhand, or, or you know what, go stand there because this is where the puck's going to come. You know, it's it's fun. It's yeah, good to be back. Bill there. Brookbank, who is uh, assistant coach now for the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins, Billy, one of my favorite teammates ever. He always said this to me. He's like, you should write down one drill a year from where you've been, right? Like, if I said to you, me and Loops, with yeah. nobody's help, could we put a practice together? Do you think we could? Fuck no. It's Fuck so hard. No we, we, we were down in the corner working with the four. No we're chance. Like, should we do breakaways? Yeah. Or should we do three line shooting? I like would go Canada Cup. Canada Cup. That's no, I would go Canada, Canada Cup. Cup. It's impossible with the kids at that age. Yeah, exactly. Once they get to the 13, you know, that, that step, like where they have starting to have hair on their balls. Yeah. Then, then, you know, you then the play. Canada Cup comes into then play. Then the Canada Cup. Then like the, the two on one, the, the forever two on one. Yeah. You oh. know, oh my God. Right. Go until someone scores. Yeah, no, but you just go like it's it's one on one down here, and then you pick up the other guy, and you come two on one. Oh, it's just up backs undercover bagger, undercover bagger. undercover bag. I used to tell the coaches like, we know what you're doing. Yeah, we know you're bagging us. I used to hate the fucking Charlie Huddy one, where sure. full, four, forward stands and then starts in the corner, D on the hash marks, and we got to skate backwards at least, and you guys just fucking go 100 miles an hour down the. You remember that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, it's so unfair to the fucking D. And then the Forge would cheat. I'm like, if you cheat again, I'm going to fucking two hand you. I yeah. swear to God, don't cheat because yeah. I'm already in one. And you're full blow blind me. It was just like, I used to hate that. was my least favorite Joel of them all. Or, or, yeah, like, or where it's like, I start in the corner and you start on the blue line. And I, we pass, pass, pass as you skating backwards. And then you rip one over to that forward that's yeah. coming up. And he goes one on one. I like you got to chase yeah. the other guy. I, I like that one better. That was a good one. I like See, that's any, one I would start with. Yeah. Any drill that had uh, 
pa- like passing had to be like there were yeah. some drills where there wasn't passing involved. I'm like this is a shitty drill. Yeah, like get your touches. Yeah, like I, if I coach, that's all I would say, boys. I'm like, boys, we're gonna get our touches today. What do you think? We're gonna be touching the puck the whole time. Like the way the game is so fast now and so slow. Are they still doing the same practices? Like, are they still doing the same drills? I don't know. Are they doing drills at all? Or are they just working on the skills? All right, let's go watch a Ducks practice next year. We'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll like bring it. Kyle the cameras and yeah. we'll see like what the fuck's going on out there. Really break it down. Really break down. Really break it down. Speaking of breaking it down, you want to talk a little French Open here, real quick? Yeah, I'd we... love to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. that was what I wanted to talk about. What a. Uh, by the way, I'm just so into tennis right now, and it's it's fun because everyone, I'm like, you know, a lot of topics, conversation I talk about is just how good the tennis is nowadays. It's like anything. It's like golf, all the good competition in golf, and it's like hockey. Like all these kids are so good, but. Well, you know, one tournament in particular, the French Open, used to be run by Nadal. I think he's got, I think he might have 12, 10 or 12 championships. He's, Dude, he's, Kyle, look this up. I heard 19. Check if that's right. 19? I don't know. I thought I heard that. But check if that, that seems like a lot. No, I think I think 20, maybe you could be right. I thought, he, I thought somebody said, or I was listening to it, and he said he won 19 French Opens. I don't yeah, know. Because he's probably got 20. I think Djokovic has 22, and that's so the Maybe 19 is a little much. Um, Kyle will track that down. For so, I, I before the tournament on DraftKings, I went in, and it's funny because the further out from the tournament you bet future on the guy, the higher the odds are, mainly because injuries or because of whatever, right? And so I picked maybe a month ago French Open. I picked Zverev, who had just great odds, and he's been a beast. Like Dude, that guy's serve was like 131 he's just miles. Huge, an hour. big German, and he's had he won the Olympic gold last Olympics. He's just a good young player. Never and, won a major though. No, I know, I know. Or but he's slam. been tickling right there, like unfortunately. And then I so he was six to one. So you know you could put whatever number you want on that, but six to one odds. And then you know, and he beat Nadal in the first game. Played Nadal in the first game because Nadal came in after being hurt. He says Nadal has the most titles with 14 at the French Open. 14 French Opens. It's insane. That's 14. Nuts. So, and then I, and then I, I love, 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 love this uh, Alcaraz, Carlos Alcaraz. He's just a great young. He's the new Nadal. He's so athletic and so just insane to watch. And, he gets some balls that you're like, how the hell did he get that? Yeah, and this, how did he get that this Sunday morning, like, you know, finale was epic. I sat in my bed. I watched the whole thing. It was um, it was a spectacle. Fuck, the German had him on the ropes. Had him on the ropes. And then Alcaraz in the fourth set just laid the wood to him. I was like, like wow. And then if any time five set finals. Some calls, on, some calls went against him. Yeah. Some calls went against the big, how do I say the German's name? Zverev. He's yeah, he didn't get every call. Yeah. I love how in the French Open how the goddamn umpire's got to get out of the chair and come down and point yeah. at that. He's like, it's right there. It's yeah. right at the ball. And he's like, no, I, I, that's what they're doing. The umpire's got to get yeah, out of the chair. It was a double fall in the fifth set that went against Zverev. It was it, Alcaraz double faulted to end the game, and the guy came on and said it hit. And then they showed the bird cam, and the bird cam even showed that it was out, but it goes off of off the umpire. goes off the umpire. And so they had to replay the thing. And at that point, Alcaraz was down, love 40, serving, came back to that way to deuce, and then won. And then it just, it, it mind-fucked Zverev. It was, yeah. I mean, th- it was a good match, though. All I was Very thinking was watching this thing, like, those boys are going to need a fucking nice massage tomorrow. I know, and they, and they battle. Like, Jump in the cold six, tub. They, I think they, you got to win six games because there's, there's 128 so the round 128, you got to win six games, and they're all five set. There's three set matches. It's just a mental. And, and John McEnroe, I think that would that might have been his last French Open. Yeah. I saw him giving like hugs and kisses to people, but he always talks about like embracing the suck, or maybe Alcaraz. That was a comment that Alcaraz said, embracing the suck. But for me, when I watch tennis, how mentally oh, yeah. tough you have to be. Yeah, right. Like, oh, you just bow your bag off. He gets the point. Then you get the point. It's just like it's it's a yeah. crazy, crazy sport, man. And you got to be so mentally tough. And then your body's got to hold up. Yeah, Obi, and this, you just said it right. Obi, you're so right. Roger Federer just did a, he just graduated from Dartmouth. Okay, so he went and he did his graduation speech and it was all based on, you know, how many points he won in his career. He won all these majors, yeah. but if you look at his points, he only won 52 or 53% of his points. Okay. It's crazy. And in tennis, he's like, you play this point and it's the biggest point ever. And then when it's gone, it's behind you. And you need to focus on the next. Yeah, it's crazy. And, and and in tennis, you have to have that mentality, or you won't win the big points that matter. Yeah, but you can lose. Like, yeah, okay, I lost one. Big deal. Got to just put it away. Yeah, and that was the kind of his his message at the. It, it's incredible. I I would suggest anyone. It's who, like 
it's like hitting a baseball, right? If you're three for t- if you hit three for ten, you're going to be a Hall of Famer. So you got to just get over. Okay, I struck out, get over it. Like tennis is even higher because it's every single point. At least in baseball, you hit, and then you have eight more guys. A couple of innings go by. Tennis, you got to regroup that next point. Yeah, and you got to focus on getting that serve in. It's just like and they're, it's they're so freak much. athletes, man. It's, yeah, it's so like much. I would like to ask those boys how fucking tired they were after that match. Like, what did they do? Because I was tired watching them. My neck was getting sore from being like, holy shit, look at these yeah. guys go. Um, how about my, I saw my girl Sablanca. She didn't win. I saw she's in, she's in Mykonos or somewhere hanging out. What happened to her? She's got a new boy toy, I think. She posted a picture. She does, eh? Some new, new she, guy. I did guy see that. started a, uh, I did see that. He started an acai company. She's a beast. Like an acai. How does she not win every time? How hard she know. hits it? Who won the girls? Uh, the, 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 the spy tech. She's the girl spy you bet? Tech. She's Polish. She's badass. Is that who you picked? Yeah, that's who I bet. I oh, risked, nice. uh, I risked, uh, 20, she was, well, how do I say that? I risked 2600 bucks to win two grand. So she was minus 260. Minus 260. No. No. Minus one. Minus 130. Sorry. No. And, that, and you had to pick her before the tournament. And the first game, she so went. She was the, that much of a favorite? Was Alcaraz that much of a favorite? In the final, she was minus 1800. What was Alcaraz to start the tournament? He was minus 170. Oh, wow. Holy shit. So that's crazy. No. He was plus 170. Yeah, I was going to say. Plus 170. Sorry, she was minus, which is insane when you think of a full tournament. That is insane, dude. Um, yeah. I, 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 whoever those boys are, I hope you got your feet up. Get a little fucking yeah. rub on the legs. Get the fucking out. Get the glutes fucking worked on because they were playing their guts out. Up is world. French oh, Open. Man. Tennis, fella. <laughs> up dog. Presented by DraftKings. Stay tuned because you'll hear more about DraftKings and all it has to offer throughout the show. DraftKings. The crown is, is yours. yours. Stanley Cup final, DraftKings fella. It is 2-1 Florida. Go ahead, fella. It's 2-0 what, what what in Florida. What did I say? 2-1, I think. It's 2 nothing it's Florida. It's 2 nothing Florida. It's probably going to be 2-1 after game three. I've had a lot see. of people text me like, What are your are you, thoughts? Are you, are you torn here? Are you torn like you're a Panther alumni? And like, you know, I know you're, you always talk about the Oilers and, you know, and I, I feel like Canada's just behind the, the Edmonton Oilers right now. I, I feel like, yeah, that, yeah. If you have Canadian blood, I mean, it's been too long since we've had the Stanley Cup, and I, I think, I think we're feeling the pressure right now. Um, but I think the Oilers might be feeling the pressure of the whole country on them. I think the country right now is now like fuck. Like we had a chance, and now it's pressure time. Now, like the the mar- it's all the cards are on the table. We got to win one, or we're toast. See, I look at it like if I was still living in Ontario and I was a Leaf fan, I would be like, I don't want the Oilers to win. I want the Leafs to be the first team to come back and win the Stanley Cup for Canada. Yeah, maybe but, I'm not a. Maybe I'm not. Yeah, but Connor McDavid's from Toronto. Yeah, he would bring the cup to Toronto. Well, what, what, that would be pretty fucking awesome, right? Yeah, that would I mean, be awesome. I, I yeah, think about all the Leafs fans. There are probably more fans of Connor McDavid than their own team because the, t- the team sucks. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe I'm just not as patriotic as I once was with you know. Whatever, that's a different subject. But well, I, I would. Say I, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Other team, I think you're cheering for them. If I didn't have my money on Florida, if it wasn't I, Tampa or Florida, if it was the New York Rangers, you'd be cheering for the Oilers. Well, I would have put my money on the Oilers, probably. Yes, but you're and you would because of Canada. I, no, I I love Connor McDavid. And I love cool. Leon Draisaitl, and I watch more Oilers games than anybody. I watch. I, I probably out of, out of 82 games, I bet you I watch 70 other games. Yeah, I love watching them play. But when it comes to the whole crunch of of the whole country of Canada pulling for them, I, I don't know if that's the case. I mean, we don't we don't really know if we ask people, right? Like, yeah, yeah. do Leaf fans do, do? Do you think Montreal Canadian fans are cheering for the Oilers? I don't think so. I don't know. I think they don't care. No, I think. You know I mean? Do you think Vancouver uh, Canucks are cheering for them? No chance. I actually do. You think the Canucks fans are pulling for them? Yeah. You think the Flames fans are pulling for them? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Like Princey is. Princey is cheering for the Oilers. Yeah. Princey. You call yourself I think, I think it's something special that Canada has not had a fucking Stanley Cup since 91, you know. Well, 93. 93. So 91 was the, the Leafs or the Flames. 93 was the Canadians. That's embarrassing. So I think, yeah, I think Canada deserves to fucking take the cup back. Well, we only got how many teams up there? Seven? Fuck. How many we got? Enough. How many we got? That's enough. Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary, Ottawa, Winnipeg. Toronto, yeah, seven. Montreal, seven. We got seven squads. We got seven. So guys. the odds are twenty. The odds are against team. us. Then you got to put up with you know playing in Canada, the Canadian media. That's another so, strike against us. Yeah. So we that is, that we got to pay more taxes than anyone up there. That's another strike against in us. Most places, so what I'm places. telling you is, I think there's a reason why there hasn't been a Canadian team win it in fucking since '93. It's harder to win it playing in Canada. Yeah. I think that's something to be true. 
Totally. Now, in saying that, we are four wins away from a Canadian team. Cats are two. The, the Cats are two wins away. We're four wins away from a Canadian team hosting it. And I just think that now, you know, it's pressures on. And, and you brought it up earlier. Like, the series, you know, it's not, not over. over. I don't think the Panthers have seen a building. Yes, they played, you know, they played against the New York Rangers last time. I don't think... MSG is going to be anything like what this Oilers rink is going to be like. The fucking mutants in Alberta. It's going to be be rocking. There's going to be fire flying in there. It's an orange crowd. It'll be a sea of of absolute debauchery. Um, So I'm excited that that I got a chance to go up there. I'm pumped to see my brother Brento. I'm I'm pumped to just experience you know Stanley Cup final hockey. Um, now, how much you bet the Oilers in Game Three? You got to fucking. Oh, I've lost. I, I fucking bet Flowers straight up. You I've given up the odds each game. I said, "Fuck so you, Flowers." We don't need to go exactly what you're betting because that's no none, none of my business or anyone's business. But whatever you've done, you need to fucking two x this one for Game Three. Like you need to put. Yeah, I what, haven't what, actually. I haven't been betting them. Much. Okay, well then, yeah. whatever you think is a is as 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 double your normal bet, you have to hammer the Oilers. If, yeah. A because you're going. And B, if you truly think they can fight their way back, yeah, they yeah. have to win this game. I think Connor McDavid said it best uh, last game. After I think I love what Connor's been saying, but one thing is like you know, fuck, we haven't. You know, we're in it. We're in a tough series, and they played good. Listen, they they, they elevated their game in game two. The Florida Panthers, Edmonton didn't keep up. The game was getting choppy and chippy, and a little out of hand. Edmonton got off their game. The Panthers, they stepped up. Their their key players were were awesome. Their goaltending has been awesome. So. But Connor said it right. They've been down in a lot of series. They've, they've been down in almost every series, and they've had their backs up against the wall with everyone doubting them, and they've found a way to to be fucking tenacious and Edmonton Oiler hockey and prove people wrong. So it's just been it's been gut-wrenching. It's been gut-wrenching because the game one... It's been gut-wrenching. I, the game one I watched, and I was having beers, you know, at this bar in Aspen and, and I'm like, fuck, if they do not put one puck behind this Bobrovsky in the first period after three breakaways, they're fucked. And it might eat them up till they go home to Edmonton, which I think it has. Uh, Bobrovsky has stole these two games from them. And now no, no, not game two, huh? Can't Florida will play them all game two. I, but I mean like them not scoring in game one and only getting one goal in game two. They, it's it's deflating. They, yeah, they, they didn't have many chances in game two. Yeah, uh, I thought they had some good looks on their power play. Yeah, and Connor had a breakaway. Um, could have kept the game to three two. Yeah. Um, I, I'm just saying. I thought the Panthers were the better team in game two. That's all. I'm they were. They were. Now I'm just focused on what you know. You asked me about the Oilers. Yes, the Panthers. Yeah. I, I said the Panthers elevated their game in game two. The Oilers. I asked you about the series, and you just started talking about the Oilers. Yeah, I know. Because I know your hearts. I know you're bleeding orange and fucking blue. Right? Well, I have a ten thousand. No, I have a fucking great. Uh, you know, I have a great ticket at the casino in As- or in Vegas yeah. on a future for yeah, the Panthers. Could... So I, I, but I just I want this series to be a great series. Well, listen, uh, for for me, I'm going to say whoever was the guy that said, decided to bring the Stanley Cup on the ice before Game One, fuck, was that cool? That was yeah. unbelievable. Both yeah. teams standing there, yeah. the, the 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 holy grail, the sexiest looking thing in the planet is right. sitting right there, and the yeah. boys are just. Kyle made a great point. They they wouldn't even go near it. They would. They were looking at it, but they wouldn't even skate near it. It's just like yeah. I saw that, and then for me, man, never played in the Stanley Cup final. When they did the introductions before the game in the final, I mean, they put the camera on, and you got that Stanley Cup crest on your jersey. I'm just sitting there thinking, like, I was so fucking jealous, and I'm just like, yeah. could you imagine? Yeah. Could you imagine just being out there and and you're four wins away from the ultimate goal? So whoever did that was unbelievable. And I will say this, in Game 1, what the Oilers did to the Panthers in Game 1 is what I thought the Panthers were going to do to them. They forechecked, they pressured, they had the puck the whole game, they cycled. They had three or four breakaways, like you said. Bobrovsky absolutely stole it. Yep. I think a week off in between series, I, I, I think there was more pressure on the Cats in Game 1 to come out, and I think they felt it, and they were rusty, and the Oilers just jumped on them. And, they, and, and listen, Bobrovsky stole Game 1, and... I think if the Oilers would have went in there and won that game one, obviously it would be 1-1 right now, but I just think that was such a big win for Florida. And then in game two, Florida got their legs back. Uh, they started playing better. Their forecheck was better. Uh, their neutral zone was better. And they're doing a hell of a job of protecting the middle of the ice. Their back pressure is some of the best in the league. That's why they're in the Stanley Cup final. And when McDavid and these guys tight turn, they just pressure back hard. They hold the middle of the ice. They don't chase. Um, but listen, you're not in trouble till you lose on home ice up, dog. And the Oilers are going home. I will say this. Their power play is 0 for 7. They got to get that going. 
And you made a great point, and I had in my notes too. The Florida Panthers are doing the best job that I've seen on Zach Hyman. Finally, they're protecting him from getting to the house, and I think that has been a reason. But the Oilers have had some looks on the peeper man, especially game one. They had some looks where Bob had to come across and make those big saves. Like, I'm just saying this series is far from over, and I guess it leads me to, are you going to hedge the Oilers? They're at plus 360 right now to hedge. Yeah. Are you going to hedge them? I have a couple thoughts on this. So Evander Kane is not himself. He can't skate right now. So he's, he's got something, right? He's got, I think it's been before this, the, before the playoffs started when he was getting ripped by that Mark Spector, it was, it was about him not playing the last like two weeks of the season. I think he's got a hernia or like a horn groin or hip. Yeah. He can't skate. He's not himself. I don't know. He's but he's playing a lot out there. I don't know if you put Ryan in and you just try to find a guy that has some speed because of Andrew Kane's just not himself. I, I would take him out. Darnell Nurse. I'd never thought I'd say this, but <laughs> if they don't have him in the lineup, taking eating twenty twenty five minutes of ice because he's you know he stayed on the bench last game, which I admire. You know, you look back at guys that just have uh, have been hurt, and you know they're hurt, but they battle through it. Whether it's Chara back in the playoffs when his fucking face got broke, his jaw was broke. He still stayed on the bench with the guys. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, Darnell Nurse, they're going to need him. You know, they're going to need him. And then Leon Dreisaitl, like, he just hasn't been himself. And I know he he's, he wants to be the guy. He's trying hard. There's, there's moments he's giving up shots. He's looking pass first. I think it's either they're doing an incredible job on him and Hyman or Dreisaitl just needs to do a more of a shot-first mentality because I think that will open up everything else for everybody. And that's just me looking from the fucking TV screen in. Dreisaitl, he hasn't been himself. And yeah, he, he If he that. gets back there, then the team has a chance. The power play has a chance. They'll be fucking leading in games. And he can get under other teams' skin. Look at what, you know kind of transpired last night they're going to be coming after him now yeah um barkoff i was just going to say i hope he's not hurt um i've heard a few things uh out of florida that he's he was all right after the game but well i don't know what that means like you know he's yeah. all right oh, he took a good shot it, took a good shot i don't think it was a i don't think it was deliberate i think the it was thing, i think it was just a i think he took a run at him yeah a run at him but yeah. you're not like he well, didn't chicken uh, wings he didn't bottom. chicken wing he no. fucking went boom like boom i got no problem with the hit yeah i, I mean it's, i think it's a penalty it was a penalty. Yeah. It was a penalty, yeah. I love that dry cells. I mean, listen, Barkov, the, the biggest problem I think the Oilers are having, and I'm saying this all with they should have won game one, right? We, it, 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 In all honesty, it should be 1-1. One, yeah. one. But as game one went on and then game two, after penalty kills, the Oilers' penalty kill is so good, he, then he, they go back to 97-29 with Hyman, and Paul Maurice just comes with Barky. Yeah. Like, Barkov has done such a great job yes. that, that that advantage that they had, which was a huge advantage against the Dallas Stars, after a penalty kill, they would go 97-29 in Hyman, and they would get not just sco- scoring chances, momentum. And it would yeah. just it would bleed into the next, you know, half a period or whatever it was. And Barky's done such a great job that that takes a little bit of an advantage away from the Oilers, in my opinion. And then I think what Knobloch's done with the bottom six, it's like it, it seemed to have worked in the first few series, but like – I, I don't know. Like, why, why is Corey Perry not playing? Yeah. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, I just don't know. Like, yeah, he wasn't great in game one, but he's been to five finals. He's got a Stanley Cup ring. Like, just find a way to get him in that lineup somewhere. And yeah. you're talking about Evander Kane. I just... Very- Fucking get... I would I would put Corey... Like, Adam Henrique, to me... Like, what, what do you think? How, 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 how's he been? I know he was hurt. I think he's think? battling something to it. Yeah. But he's not there to to be the fastest player. I liked he's finishing his checks. In game one, he played he played a big game in game one. Like, I thought he played, like, bigger than his body is. Um, but he's not a, you know, he's not a first, second line guy to me. No, no, no. I would put Perry back with Tricidal for game three. I would I would give Pairs a chance on that line and then move maybe move Ryan McLeod up like they did. But I would put Pairs with Dreisaitl because Dreisaitl plays that. He can slow it down and protect the puck and give Pairs time to get to the net and, and do his thing and be the worm in front. Like yeah. To me, you got to have Corey Perry in the rest of the series. Like Enough enough with bringing yeah. him in and out to me. Like, no, he, I, he and he will, I think he will be, OB. I think there's there's too much. Like Fogel proved last night like he's that, that was the liability. Like, I mean, I would have done the same type of check, but you can't. You know, you got to read the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to read the game. I mean, it, they just ran Bouchard. It was, you know, it Bennett, Bennett runs Bouchard pretty hard. You're 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 making an attempt to have a big body check. Yeah. You clip his knee. It's a five-minute penalty, which is bullshit because the guy stayed in the game. But 
I don't know. No, I think that that should be a play a factor too, right? If the guy stays in the game and this guy gets tossed and it's five minute penalty, like yeah, it's definitely a penalty. I didn't think it was five. Five. I mean, five. I love Listerine. In. I don't love that he like kind of laid on the ice there a little bit. I don't. I don't, love, I don't, that I don't love that either. But I love Listerine. I love Lundell. Yeah. Those two Finnish guys. Totally. They call they call Lundell baby Barkov. The media's calling him that, and that's kind of what he is—a poor man's bark. He's kid's unbelievable. Listerine is unbelievable. But hitting why you hit? Let's say Barkov yeah. can't play game. I know. I know. Then this series completely changes. If you take Barkov out of the Cats lineup, it is a matchup nightmare for Paul Maurice. Like, Barky has been unbelievable, man. Yeah. He's given up one goal to uh, yeah, points. It's insane. No, He's... Kucherov, um, Pasta, Breadman. One fucking goal, dude. Yeah. Gretz said he's the best defensive player he's seen since Brian Trotje. How's that for Yeah, I know. It's, inc- it's incredible. I, I remember it's incredible. Brian Barky has always had that that knack for, like, being tough on pucks, being tough in battles, and he's so strong. He's a beast. beast. He's an absolute beast. How fired up are you as you go up there? Yeah, it's going to be sick. Yeah, yeah. I'm jumping on my boy Jesse's bird. We're leaving Thursday morning. We're going to get there right to the barn, and it's going to be w- rocking, bro. That is going to be an experience, time. dude. Yeah, yeah that that is it's going to be, be awesome. I can't wait. Did you see uh, Gretz had uh, mess at the Grove again? I did. I saw him, Brian Leach, and mess. Yeah, right? what a group. That was, a, that was our round last year. I showed up so fucking hungover. Didn't make a goddamn par on the front nine. <laughs> I go, Gretz, that front nine summed up my playing career. He goes, you weren't that fucking good, Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> up dog, your Oilers aren't done. Chucky yeah, and the boys, Monty. Well. Keep her fucking going, boys. Keep her going. Missing curfew. Oh, oh, dog, dog of the week. week. We're staying in the we're staying in the country of Finland. Uh, Nico Mikula uh, played unbelievable. Huge goal in game two over 17 minutes. He's playing big. His stick is long. He's just been fucking good all year for him, and he's been continuing to be good in the playoffs. He's a dog out there, up dog. He gets rewarded with a nice little one-timer goal posting in. What a shot. Yep. But to me, it's the other things he's doing. By the way, you can throw Kulikov in there again as a dog of the week. He's playing unbelievable. All of Ekman Larson's playing great. Those guys on the fence, dog of the week. Nico, good Finnish guy. Um, it's funny. All Finnish guys... They sound the same in English, kind of. I, I, I just, his interview with Emily Kaplan or whatever. He sounded like every other Finnish guy speaking. Yeah, English. they have that. Like I, I don't know how to, to describe. I know, and I'm good. You brought up their whole decor because they they're all dogs of the week. They're they're you know you you keep the Edmonton Oilers the one goal. It's not just Bobrovsky. It's your whole team. It's your whole defensive game. So you know you just mentioned it. Kulikov, uh, Ollie. Yeah, that's in, they're yeah. playing incredible. Good for him. Seems like a good Finnish lad. He's like he said something funny. He's like. Yeah, I, uh, he goes, it was the tale of two two different situations for me. I went from reversing it onto Bob, but it's okay. Bob was awake. <laughs> it's okay. Bob was awake. So uh, congrats to him. Keep going, fellow. You're playing great. Up dog, Jagermeister. Presented by Jagermeister. Best served at zero degrees Fahrenheit. Damn, fellas, that's cold. Check Jagermeister out at www.draftkingsxjagermeister.com. Cheers, fella. Here's oh. to going back to the mother of the homeland. Yeah. Uh, good luck up there. How oh, fun. Yeah, by the way. How drunk are you going to get? Oh, just because we do that one <sighs> shot every podcast, these boys up in Canada, when they see us, they better. think we want the whole bottle. I do. Huh? Give me the whole yeah, oh. they, they, I'm like, let me just do one. I mean, they bring me five or six at a time. I'm like, boys. I know, yeah, I know you hear Obi talk. I did about a I lot. Like to, I like to drink. I like the wine and stuff. But <laughs> I did a lot of Jagger shots yeah. at Agretta in Vancouver. Waste. Hey, you know those two beauties, Schmoltzy and uh, he yeah, they're up there. They're they're having yeah. a party at Greta's. I, the I I know. I don't know what time I'm going to get in, but it, I, you know, if I'm there in time, those guys are beauties. Um, did you see Heat Daddy signing the bras? Uh, yeah, that's, that's unbelievable. Um, <laughs> hey, you see Stay Schmoltz, hot, Schmoltz? Yeah, fucking right. Schmoltz and his brother on a pretty cool thing that um, I always said if I ever ever had a son, I would do this or a brother. Uh, they're going like ballpark to ballpark. They went like Cincy, Pittsburgh. Sweet. Yeah, they're doing it right now. It's pretty cool. Yeah, oh, something that I always thought if I had a kid, or maybe I'll do it with my nephews, try to get, it's hard to get to all the ballparks, but to go on a little ballpark trip is check them all out, jump yeah. in the car, go the next one. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's sick. Uh, speaking of pretty good, Evan Rodriguez, up dogs, oh. boy, his shot, game one. Spink, dink, spinky. Spinky over Skinner's blocker. Unbelievable shot. It was a huge goal in the game. It is our Jagger, iciest shot of the night, up dog. Your boy's playing great. What a shot. Damn, that's cold. Yeah, you're damn right, buddy. It's uh, it's I was spinky, spinky, spinky. I mean, last night, little tip too, but that shot you're talking, boom, up over the bar. Um, 
Yeah, what a shot! What a goal! We could we could put that we could put that tip in there too. That was that was juice. The tip, that was, tip juice was juice. Too. I mean, the whole thing was juice. Tip yeah. posted in Skinner to have a chance. Yeah. Uh, up dog, get this guy, Labatt Blue. Fellas, presented by Labatt Blue Light, the pristine Pilsner. Enjoy your beers together, especially playoff time, so you can live life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsibly. Beer, Labatt USA in Buffalo, New York. All right, I'll lead us off oh. here. It starts in that Bobrovsky, get yourself a Labatt Blue. That game one performance was unbelievable. Um, his odds for the Con Smythe went from like, plus whatever the hell he was to the favorite after game one's performance. And that's how good it was. He absolutely stole that one. The way he was tracking the puck, the way he was protecting the bottom half of the net right now, it's unbelievable. And he's making athletic saves. Bob Bobrovsky, and I love how he goes around and taps all the boys. I, I love yeah. that. Get yourself a little bat blue. Evan Rodriguez, fella, I called you out before this playoff started. I said, I need you. If, you're gonna, if the Panthers are going to win, you're going to be the guy. I wish I bet you. I, I bet fucking something else. on. Uh, I bet Leon Dreisaitl to score the most goals in this playoff series. But right now, fella, you are leading the charge. Two goals and an assist in two playoff games so far in the finals. Um, and epic goals. Two game winners. And this kid's just not slowing down, boys. No, he's making Bill Zito look like a genius. Giving him, I believe, four years, $12 million contract. He's playing unbelievable. This kid is not old enough to get a Labatt Blue, but his dad and mom... I'm sure he's sneaking some. Yeah, for raising this beauty. The kid behind the bench with his tarp off. He called the called the score three nothing. Had his tarp off. Just that's a little beefcake. Uh, your parents get a little bat blue for this kid. Great kid. Made me laugh up, dog. And I wanted to give him some love on the podcast. So, kid, when you get old enough, get a little bat blue in you, fella. And then, fella, why not one more? Oilers PK streak ended 34 straight in the playoffs. That's got to be some sort of record. I, I don't know, but that uh, on the Rodriguez backdoor. Uh, tap in or on the Bouchard turnover, whatever one. But listen, Oilers, keep it going. That PK is something special. There's going to be, a, you know, this copycat league in the NHL. There'll be teams breaking down this over the summer on what the hell you guys have been doing in the playoffs. But blocking shots, working with each other, the same group of just workmen out there. Um, well done, boys. Yeah. Get yourself a blue light. I guess we should just give the blue light to Mark Stewart, their, their PK coach. Yeah. Yeah. That guy deserves a little bat blue because when they fired the coach, Dave Manson, I uh, was running the D. He got piped too. He was doing the PK. Knobloch didn't know Mark Stewart. Gave him the gig. So Mark Stewart, get yourself a Labatt Blue. But their whole PK has been unbelievable up dog. So um, I said special teams are going to be key in this playoffs, and they're going to continue to be. Oilers power play has got to get humming, and that PK for the for the Oilers got to stay stay exactly where it is. Shake off that Rodriguez tip. You sometimes you got to tip your hat. Yeah. It's milk cart time here, Mister Curfew. Uh, Ekblad, I thought he played great in game two. Eki, I love you. <sighs> And you're really good at this flip. You're really good at the flip. He is good at that at certain times. Yeah. However, in game one, he continued to flip it out and just into the neutral zone. Yeah. And the fucking 97 and 29 would pick it up and come 100 miles an hour back down their throat. Going up north, you're going to be in the fucking shit storm. I get it. It's easy for me from my couch. The high flip is good at times, but you cannot continue to just put it out in the neutral zone and let these guys regroup. I'd rather you eat it in the corner, Eki. I'd rather you just keep it in your feet then give it to them and let them start circling the wagons and coming at you. So as good as he is at the flip, it's a nice thing to have. You either got to get it over their blue line. You can't feed their transition, in my opinion, up dog. So Alki, you played great, but get that high flip deeper, fella. Don't feed their transition. I'm putting that flip on the card. I love cart. that. I love that. And one thing I, I recognized, and it was said yesterday on TV, but the Oilers in game one did such a good job of keeping the play into the, you know, into oh, the Florida, into coming. the deep zone. And it was this like, it was almost standard where Florida would finally get the puck and they come out and they would just try to dump it in and the Oilers would, would be already fresh and already changed and they would just keep coming back. And so I remember Alex Steen always saying, guys, like make a play, especially when you're tired and you can make that one play that we can keep control of the puck rather than just trying to just effortlessly dump it down because then you change and guys got to come out onto this onslaught of just offense from exactly. the other teams. So you're like, just... Just be confident with the puck, like you said. Yeah. Eat it a little bit longer. Hit your far D. Fucking bring the cup. Bring the uh, puck back. Yeah. Let your team change. But sometimes, buddy, when no, listen, I, I, I fucking, I get scrambling. it. And listen, Eki's good at it. Yeah, I, and you mentioned it last year when they went on the run. You said Eki's, and when 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 Eki gets it inside his blue line and flips it back to where the Oilers' defense has to get it inside their blue line. That's a great play because now it gives us time for our forwards, for you up dog to get in your lane, for our center to get in early. Now we can gap up. 
But as a D man, when you flip it out to the red line yeah. and you're down by the dots, now you can't gap up. Yeah. And now they're coming this way. It's like we are completely fucked. Yeah. You know what I mean? So just something I noticed. Eki, you're fucking bowing your bag off, buddy. I thought you played great in game two. Sealed it with the empty netter. And then last but not least, listen, we're, we live in a world where this is the Stanley Cup final. And you know what? I love Jackie Redmond. I think girls are great for hockey. I think they're great. Jackie Redmond, I think, is one of the greatest girls to ever cover hockey. She's great on TNT. And this is nothing personally to Emma Clapham. I'm sure Emily is a sweetheart girl. And I give her credit when she interviews guys from other countries. She goes out of her way to learn how to say thank you in their country. She said Kitos last night, which is thank you in Finnish. She learns how to do it in Russian. I'm sure she's a great writer. But Emily's sweetheart, it's the Stanley Cup playoffs. And I got to be honest with you here. I'm putting your questions on the milk carton because the questions she's asking, uh, the delivery's too short. They're not great questions. They're, they're, the, the, the coaches, the guy, they're looking like, what? What? The players are kind of like, what? I think she does a. I think she does a good job when they go to her during the period, or before the period, and say, "Hey, I just talked to uh, the assistant coach still on the fave. They say this is what they got to do." I think she's great at that. However, Emily, I think your questions need some work, sweetheart. It's nothing personal. I'm just going to put you on the milk carton up, dog, because her questions to the players and coaches are awful. Yeah. I, I listen. I've watched every playoff game. It's just a Stanley Cup final. It's corrective. It's what's what do they call it? Corrective criticism. Constructive. Yeah, it's constructive. Constructive. Criticism. And I think it's time that you you put her on here. Actually, yeah. it's it's time. You know, we we do appreciate the fact that she's a great writer. But at the Stanley Cup final, you you expect that the TV is going to give us the best TV experience of all time. And I agree that yeah. the coaches kind of look at her sometimes like I can't believe you just asked yeah. me that question. And they're just they're just bad questions. And yeah. listen, she has the job that she has. There are so many women out there that are working towards that job that would give anything to have that job. And I'm not saying she doesn't prepare herself and I'm not saying she's not a pro because she probably is. I don't know her personally. I'm just saying as a listener and a fan of the league, the questions are not good enough. They're just bad questions. Like call it as what it is. People may listen to Mr. Curfew and think this is a bad podcast. That's your right. Don't listen to Mr. Curfew. Unfortunately, I have to watch ESPN because it's on there. So for me, I love Steve Levy. I love mess. I love PK. And I think Emily does a good job at certain times. Her questions, they're on the milk carton. Yeah. They're just bad questions. Someone give her some new questions. That's all I'm going to yeah, say. Up that's, and, but good point. They yeah. just can't give her questions. Help her with the questions. I think they might, though. I, and she, yeah. yeah. There's some intern really screwing up over there. Yeah, uh, I mean, listen, this is, this is not the personal. The ter- they're terrible. They're terrible questions. Maybe don't even go to the coaches then in the middle of the game. Or you go, or you go up to like... Uh, Let Stevie ask him. Stevie. Or who, or, or, um, who does the color? Ray? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You let Ray get, give the coach a headset. Ray asks yeah. the question. Yeah, because Panger, play by play Panger usually does that. Yeah, for, yeah. Or well, Jackie, no, Jackie, Jackie does it. Jackie, does she listen, jump on the bench? So she I jumps think. on the bench. Okay. Jackie Redmond's questions are she's are great. Perfect. Jackie's the biggest. She's pro unbelievable. Pro. She's, yeah, Jackie's a pro. And listen, and I'm sure you know Emily prepares and she's doing her best and she's a good writer. And I, at times when she does do the stuff, like I said, it's good. The questions, however, are not, and, and that's why she's on the milk card. But hey. It's all out of love here at Missing Curfew. You know, people listen to me and they rip me all the time. It's part of the gig, eh, Updog? Yeah, totally. Uh, Back up the Briggs truck real quick, Updog. Next year, the NHL salary cap is going up to 88 bananas, four and a half million. That's that's a legit player, Updog. That's a... Yeah. That's nice. There's a lot of teams that could use that extra four bananas right now. Yeah. Somehow Vegas is going to get an extra eight probably with that. Yeah. <laughs> Vegas <laughs> Vegas will find a way to get uh, a little extra eight bananas. We'll somehow. get that for sure. Hey, Ops, yeah. I wanted to go over the Four Nations Cup for you. Yeah. I don't want to rush it. Um, so we'll save it for uh, Fellow Friday. Yeah. Fellow Friday, we'll save it for. Sure. I don't want to rush this for you. Four Nations Cup. Me and the Updog had a pretty good debate before we got on the air. So, fellas, we'll do that for you on Fellow Friday. Updog. You're a beauty. Kyle Morgan, thank you, Hall Pass Media. That was Missing Curfew. Fellas.